Greetings folks. This video is going to be a bit of a follow-up to the wonderful old Dynam Catalina. Uh, great looking model, really hard to fly. Just like the real thing, I believe, from all reports, the real Catalina was a real difficult plane to fly. You had to wrestle it around the sky, you had to use every control available and all your strength to fly it, which is kind of similar to the model. Uh, so I thought I'd have a bit of a look at what I've done. Uh, it's flying really well now. I like the way it flies. I'm still not game enough to take it off from water. I really don't have a nice little pond or a lake. Uh, th there are some within an hour's drive, so eventually I'll take it out to a, uh, to a lake for a bit of uh, water flying. But as I said, this is more of a collection model for me rather than a, uh, a frequent flyer. The big problem with this plane is that it has really bad adverse yaw and one of the main reasons is it's got a really big wingspan and a short tail moment, which means the tail isn't very far away from the wing. So the wing kind of takes over uh, all the steering. The tail is kind of small and it's blanketed. A lot of it is blanketed by all the infrastructure in front of the tail, so it doesn't get nice uh, airflow. Uh, so it's, it's kind of small and ineffective. So uh, it's guaranteed to have adverse yaw. Now what's adverse yaw? That's when you put the plane into a roll and it turns away from the roll instead of sort of into the roll like, like you expect. So that makes the, the plane very difficult to turn. You have to use lots and lots of rudder and try and minimise the amount of aileron you use. What I did to combat that was mix in a lot of rudder with the ailerons so that you can use one stick to roll and turn at the same time, which is sort of, you know, my lazy way of flying. <clears throat> you can also use the rudder to initiate the turn and then just sort of stabilise the roll with the ailerons, but even so, it, it really doesn't turn all that well. It resists the turn. The thing that made the biggest difference to the flying characteristics was adding aileron differential, and that means we have the aileron going up a lot more than it goes down. The problem with the ailerons is that uh, the when the aileron goes down, it produces more drag than the aileron that goes up. So you get an imbalance of drag on uh, wingtip to wingtip, uh, and that pulls the, the plane around in the wrong direction when you're doing a turn, basically. So uh, kind of stops the plane from turning the way you want it to. I have 70% differential. Uh, so you can see that's the downward movement. That's the up movement. So it goes goes down maybe five millimetres and up probably 15 millimetres. Flying very nicely now. One suggestion that people offered was that I need to use counter-rotating props and it does have counter-rotating props. It's actually supplied with counter-rotating props. Uh, they actually spin out from the top which is an unusual direction um, but there's no real reason with models uh, to go one way or the other. In fact they could go both go the same way and it really wouldn't make a lot of difference. I'm, I'm going to do a test video in the future with a plane that I can easily swap the directions and the props and show you that planes, props can spin the same direction inwards or outwards and it's really not going to affect the performance of a model very much. Uh, all the theory about those counter-rotating props is, is more about um, full-size aircraft and high angle of attack and um, stuff that really isn't relevant to models as far as I know, uh, but I may prove myself wrong. So yes, it does have counter-rotating props. It's set up that way from the factory. It's set up to rotate outwards on the top like that. You can see we've taken a bit of enemy fire here. Well, actually one of the props came off and, and bit its way through the, the cockpit area there, but you can get a replacement what they call a blister pack, which is all the plastic parts on the plane for about $18 Australian, so I can easily replace all of that, but I kind of like a bit of damage on it. So I want to take it out and fly it some more, but I can show you some of the footage that I've got with the aileron differential. I think I can improve it even further um, to get it flying really nicely and easy to fly. That's the main thing. I want it to be easy to fly it with a scale look, just nice and slow and gentle. Oh, it's flying better now.
Got some aileron differential in. And that's flying much better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's nicer. Still needs rudder. Still, <laughs> still a bit weird. I do have some uh, differential thrust as well. Yeah. Being chased by a little hawk. Whoa, there's a differential thrust. Didn't like it. <laughs> Flying on six amps. Six amps, that's not too bad. Five amps, six amps, sort of minimum speed. Really touchy on the rudder now. Overdone the rudder a bit. Oh, that's great. That's hands off. Oh, much better. No, oh, really, too much rudder if you use the rudder. But I can fly it a lot more calmly now. Watch out for the sun. Still seems to wallow a bit. Probably need to fly it a bit faster, I think. Ooh, be careful of that rudder. That's better. That's flying well now. I've calmed the rudder down a bit. Got quite a lot of rudder mixing into the aileron. That's a reasonably nice turn. Yeah, that's much better. And inputting some rudder isn't overacting too. There's rudder. That's nice, much better. So I've dialed down the rudder a bit. Still a bit wiggly. I'll quickly show you how to set up differential, aileron differential on the Tyrannus and OpenTX, aileron channels 1 and 2. I usually do all of my mixing on the mixer page um, and don't use the input page, but if you want expo and differential on the same uh, control surface, then you do need to use the inputs page. So we set up an input 01, which is the aileron stick. I've got 70% weight and 15% exponential. Just show you that in the edit page. That's reflected on, on the graph here. It doesn't go from 100 to 100. It goes from 70 to 70 and a little bit flattened off in the middle. And then we use that input for the aileron channels, channel 1 and channel 2. And then we can use the curves line down here to choose differential. The problem is with the mixes page you sort of only get one curve line uh, and you have to choose either expo or differential. And you can see I need a negative differential on the channel 2 on the other aileron 
just to make sure that uh, it was going up more than down and not down more than up. You just have to program it in and uh, watch the control surface.